I've wanted to do this video for a while and just take you through like a real deal scenario of my clean out. I enjoy watching content like this, uh, seeing the inside of people's wardrobes, what they enjoy wearing. I've divided uh, the things I have and the things I wear the most into sort of four little categories uh, that I've realized they things that are staples for me, that I really live my life in. And I guess I'm just chuffed that I've, I feel like I've actually figured it out. Like I've really sort of got a handle on my style now and I've tried to get rid of all the confusion. So yeah. So first is my blazer and lightweight jacket collection. There's some linen and I've got three sort of like very oversized denim jackets and a selection of blazers. What's quite nice about this is that I counted through and my favorite ones actually have ended up being secondhand purchases from charity shops. Things that I found in my early 20s that cost me nothing from small little shops. And the ratio is about half. I've got half vintage or second hand and half new. Yeah, I've got some real goodies. I've got like a vintage aquascutum, which I love. Uh, this is actually a full suit, which is like my go-to suit. I've got some men's blazers that I actually altered myself to give like the exact right fit. And I've gotten rid of all the riffraff and now any one of these that I put on, I know I'm just going to feel great. Moving on to the shirt section. I have very few left. I'll sort of take you over here so you can see. That's the extent of it. I'll talk about this later. But basically, they're all beige um, planes. There's a classic denim shirt. There's this sort of over jacket thing. I've got one summer, like random off the shoulder top but yeah the main deal is it turns out I really like basic neutral colored shirts that's what I want to wear all the time oh this looks a bit skew yeah I like very neutral classic things I got rid of all the sort of band-aid purchases so that's like things I was buying to fill a momentary little desire a quick fix I love different shirts and I guess I used to justify the fact that because I love separates, I love jeans and shirts, I would excessively buy jeans and shirts. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they were all being worn because there was just so many of them. If you want to see the, the extent of the embarrassing collection, they're all on Depop now. I'm just left with the things that I've actually always wanted to wear with a few like options. Like literally, I think there's like five or six there. It's like so easy. I know whichever one I take off is one that I'm going to like really love. And I do think that as I design my own shirts and I get that correct, I will maybe let go of some more. I'm definitely, I can't let the wardrobe get any bigger. Uh, I'm moving on to a boat. <laughs> uh, if you've been watching the previous two videos. So as it is, it's still probably a little bit too big and I'm going to have to, I don't know cross that bridge when we come to it in a few months but yes I will keep it the same size so as something new comes in something will have to go out narrowing it down is opening up some space for me to become a little bit more creative with my design it's as if I had to fix this area and fix my own wardrobe to figure out why I was feeling lost or what was bugging me and I guess that's like everything in life like if one area is off balance the whole thing feels a bit weird so I guess it seems superficial to put a lot of time and energy into our wardrobes but we get dressed every day and it's the first like the first decision of our day and if that's off or bugs us or takes too much time we've got issues I've got four pairs of trousers hanging there so one that's in that uh, light blue color is going to get dyed navy because I love the style but that color goes with like nothing. I've got a pair of winter wool gray suit trousers which are amazing and then two other pairs of balloon shaped denim that are recent purchases but like it's the one shape that is like I don't know how when it got invented or who came up with it who called it a balloon I don't care I love it like I'm going to talk to you about my jeans 
uh, in a bit and like honestly the balloon shave is like my heaven I have an issue with jeans in that I've really always wants to look like the model in the picture that's posing with like the straight leg jean and she's like really narrow through the hip area and the leg is like just like skimming her perfectly and it's just like this one long column I don't know why it took me so long to realize that it doesn't matter what I do like I don't have that body shape there are no perfect jeans that are gonna make me look like that and I need to just get over it what the balloon jeans do is they are wide I keep them sort of like wide on the waist so that the waistband is not too tight so it sort of sits away which then gives the illusion that I have this really like narrow tiny waist and then because I've got bigger hips that sort of bulge or sag around the knee gives me that like straightness that balances me out and makes me look like straight up and down instead of like the curves some people might like curves I don't really I would love to be like really really straight up and down I like that like boyish vibe or whatever I just you know don't have that body type even though it's not exactly the same it just makes me feel really good and at the end of the day if something does it for you lean in One pair now these are Levi's column fit I've kept sort of one of each different fit so these are a wedgie fit which is like a mom jean and this is Levi's rib cage like if you're looking for that like I don't know I'm not trying to sell Levi's here but I just they're the only jean that I really love and like the number one thing is like the pocket for me like the pocket to bum ratio is like amazing if you've got like a wider hip I can't deal with a small pocket um yeah I've got like a crop flare that I made myself I actually cut up a uh, rigid these have no stretch so they fit like really really cool and um I crop them so they're like a crop flare which I really love uh, you can create like cool looks with that this is like a drop crotch men's pair of jeans that I just altered the waistband and they came out really good this is a pair of uh vintage Calvin Klein jeans and I found them at a charity shop I did have to alter the side, so I lost some detail in the denim there, but totally worth it for the rest of the jeans. Like, they've got the most amazing fit, like, down the rest of the legs, so I'll deal with that. And then these are, like, the holy grail of charity shop vines. Um, Totem uh, twisted seam jeans, so it's, like, a classic fit that they, I don't know if they still do it, like, I try not to go on the website because it makes me feel upset, but I can't afford those things right now. Um, I never have been able to really so yeah this the only thing that I did do um, they were that length and then I needed just that little bit extra like they were just a little bit too high on the ankle for me so I did that alteration which is a bit tatty I just run um, I tried to use the same color stitching as what they have there just to try and like um, make sure it doesn't fray too much and I'm okay with that raw edge like a while ago a lot of jeans had this um, Sort of detail on it and i'll sacrifice that for the fact that i paid like 15 pounds for totem jeans and they still had the tag on like can you even so i also have uh this pair of levi's 501 skinnies that i did an alteration to some over skinny jeans like i got rid of all anything that was like way too stretchy or anything that is too tight on my leg yeah, the alteration came out pretty good. Like they fit a little bit looser now, which is great. And the bleaching really helped take it from the dark, the dark navy sort of indigo uh, denim that it was from the pair of jeans that I cut up. And now it just makes it look like it's as close as possible, I'd say, to being part of the design of the jeans. I'm really chuffed that somehow I was able to to fix them and I can now wear them and keep them in my collection. So bringing this thing full circle and piecing together the last bits, this uh, little rail I put here, it's my market rail so when I go to a market I use it, but a few things on here that's like the miscellaneous section I guess. I've got two like jumpsuits which are amazing. I worked in retail 
all of last year and doing visual merchandising it's really great when you're climbing up and down things because things aren't tucked in and coming out you just look the same all day long and it's comfortable those two i'm actually going to keep because we're moving on to the boat uh beforehand obviously we are going to be doing some work on the boat and i think i will look really cool doing the painting and sanding and whatever else uh paul is gonna involve me in i'm quite happy to let them get a bit uh, mucked up and stuff like that's fine and then this is just three coats a huge black wool one that goes over everything fits over a blazer chunky knitwear um a men's trench coat that's kind of waterproof just for a different color and then a more tailored trench coat so i'm not going to show you all the things Eventually, as I said, like I hope to do more like style videos. skirts and dresses person i've tried every now and then i go through like a little phase and then i think yeah i should really get into feeling feminine and floaty and yeah it never really lasts for too long uh one dress that stuck around is this floral printed one and i think i've altered this thing oh, like four or five times it was based off of a design that i made for a fashion week collection for a winter collection and then i tried it in this viscose fabric as a summer dress just for myself i think i made a few for stores they never got bought <laughs> um but yeah it, it, this fabric is just a little bit too soft for it but nevertheless i've used this as like my experiment dress i wore it this past weekend and felt so amazing in it but i don't really like the print it's not my fave and I just don't like wearing viscose. It's too soft in like a bad way. Uh, it just doesn't feel like really great quality. I know you get different types, but this one in particular is not great. So I love this dress, but I will be passing it on. And I've got some really great creamy, like a stone color beige fabric. And I'm going to make a dress out of that because I think the cream will take me through winter as well. If it wants to wear it with boots and like this color jumper will actually work really nice on it. So, love the dress, but it's being replaced with a different colour. Skirts uh, and the other dresses, I want to style up and just practice like wearing for like my occasion wear. So I like the idea that I could like pop something on out of the ordinary, like if I'm going out at night or to an actual event or someone invites me to a party or just maybe a dinner and look a bit different to what I look like all the time. So instead of uh, just jazzing up what I normally wear, like jeans with like more jewelry or something, which is also an option, like really try to get some wear out of the dresses in that in that way, and then kind of feel cool. Like I always think to myself that like nice moments, and I guess this is from watching too much movies, but you see a woman and she's dressed up, and it's like a pretty woman moment, you know, and you're like, wow. I thought maybe dresses could be like that for me. Naturally, I'm going to make things like oversized and feel a bit more me and layer with some blazers. And then the most snazzy thing, which is just another holy grail from the old charity shop, is the old one piece of couture that I own. So this is Givenchy and I'm pretty sure it's from the 80s. It's like a classic puff sleeve uh just like a short length dress it's so beautifully made it's really amazing it's got like stiffening inside here that really like shapes the puff sleeve it's divine i got it in my early 20s from a charity shop in Bononi, where i grew up and i can't believe that i found it there and literally i probably paid like 15 rand for it which is like oh 75p like it's just it's insane they obviously didn't know what they had and yeah so that one stuck around and i just i can't get rid of it i don't want to sell it and i want to get some wear out of it so i'm gonna also experiment with how i could wear that for a party or just to go out for like a nice fun dinner in the summer or something so i think that's about all i can show you for now i'm gonna leave like shoes and accessories um 
for another time otherwise this video will be very lengthy i think the number one thing was just having that time in lockdown to wear my clothes and even now i'm still doing it actually getting dressed every day at home and in your most comfortable space sitting moving around cooking cleaning Moving about in clothes in that kind of a way gives you insight as to whether they really fit for you. Like what I found in my case is I pressure so much that it got to a point I couldn't even like go any further. It was just blankly staring me in the face that I needed to change. And that happened a few months before lockdown hit anyway. So it was just like lockdown came at a good time for me to further solidify that reality and really start working on it. So I'm super grateful for places like Depop and all the people that have been buying from me. Like, it's so nice that the length of the clothes, lives that I made mistakes with are gonna be extended. So that's amazing. Uh, there are certain things obviously that uh, need to just be donated and that's cool too. And then it's a big learning curve. So going forward, obviously the point is to not get into that space ever, ever again. Simplifying has really allowed me to have a lot more fun where you'd think that the more you have and the more colors and the more frills and whatever like the more fun you'd be having i wasn't having fun i was in a state half the time like figuring out what to wear and being that person with like a full-on wardrobe and be like oh my gosh i have nothing to wear and i just felt this immense like sense of guilt as in like oh but i bought this and it was supposed to be so amazing and i'm not wearing it and i bought it to go out and like why am i not wearing it it's um a vicious little circle and I just know that when I wear the more classic basic things, I feel like way more amazing. And when I want to wear the weird quirky thing, like I have this weird pair of orange shoes or I have a large clay earring that I've made that I want to wear, it stands out so much more. It's not fighting with everything else. And I understand everyone's got different styles. I'm just talking about my style journey and how I've come around to figure out what works for me. I've also enjoyed figuring out what my like natural instincts are. So I used to be a stylist. I used to work in like a um, for a large clothing company. That's where you're using like sort of the basics, like shush this, roll this, tuck this. This is cool. Everyone's doing the French tuck. Everyone's doing this. Like that's great. But what I've realised is that I'm over watching style videos where people are like do this stuff and it's suddenly going to save your wardrobe. You can't save bad clothes. You can't save a bad outfit with a tuck. Like, tweaks are one thing, but they don't replace quality and great fit and shape. And, yeah, now that I've realized that, and I'm lucky enough that along the way, about, like, in amongst all the rubbish, I've have made some good purchases. So, I'm not stuck with nothing after getting rid of most of the the nasty fast fashion buys um like obviously i still will like roll my jeans or judge my sleeve but i think what i'm trying to say is just i want the clothes to speak for themselves even if i didn't do that you know i don't want to be stuck standing in front of the mirror going oh i've got to make this shirt work da, da, da. if the shirt's not working the shirt's not working it's not a shirt that you want to be wearing no matter how much you like it if you put it on it doesn't feel good you can roll that sleeve till the cars come home like just get to grips with the fact that you probably need to let it go there's different things that i've done whether it's the things i eat or how i live small small ways i don't profess to <laughs> to be doing the most at all but small small ways that you can change that are really easy and so reeling everything in and taking away uh, restricting my purchases restricting my wardrobe whittling it down refining it is really making me feel so much more creative and so much more capable and giving me a lot of strength to figure out what i'm going to do um going forward with making things designing things and hopefully turning that into like a real functioning business again and by default that is then being in a way sustainable because I'm not purchasing, I'm not making meaningless purchases. But I think it's one thing to talk about all uh, the great places you can shop and like supporting local and da, da 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 but I never really got that or that never really settled in for me until I fixed myself. So it was kind of like living like a bit of a hypocrite to being like, I'm an independent designer but I'm shopping at Zara and you know like the whole thing just didn't make sense and it was off kilter and off balance and I needed to sort it out and so I've gotten to the bottom of it I 
imagine there'll still be some bumps along the road and it's much easier in lockdown now because finances are different and uh, we're not, I'm not going out, I'm not faced with stores. So yeah, I'm sure there are going to be a lot of challenges uh, going forward, but I think I've used my time wisely in getting myself off to or getting it to a nice place and a nice stable base to continue forward from anyway that was a very long speech and yeah i don't know what will be up next week i really want to show you some of the things i've made and maybe some some maybe some more styling um and how i've sort of gotten around to creating some cool uniforms for myself and coming to terms with like my own original thing okay so if you like, then I'll see you next time.